Bye. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Born with RC. Uh, so tonight we're going to do a video on the new Creighton EXB rear diff. Uh, there's been lots and lots of problems with these online. Um, so Adrian down at Bad Touch Breakers, link in the description to his website. Awesome website for all your MTC stuff, uh, well all sorts of stuff, so make sure you check him out. He's donated this to me to see if I can find a solution to run the rear diff as an open diff. Currently the, the only solution out there to fix this problem the armour I've put out there is to put in the limited slip diff plates into the rear. Now, they're very hard to get hold of, um, and also you might not want to run the limited slip in the rear. So I want to find a solution of how to shim these up or make these work properly in an open diff. So I'm going to be getting in nice and close so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to run through lots of different checks I'll do. Um, and then once I've done it all and I've set it all up, I'm going to take it out and give it some proper tests and some proper hard bashing. And once I've put sort of 10 packs through it, there'll be 6 and 8 S, so that we know it's working well. Um, the video will be out there and you can see how to set up your EXB rear diff so that you can use it as an open diff. Okay, so before I strip this down then, one of the things I always like to do with a diff when I first get it, is hold on to two of the cups and give the other one a little rock. Now, you can see there, I've got quite a bit of movement on that other one and I can actually hear the knocking where it's hitting between the crown gear and the pinion so there is a little bit of movement there and also if I get hold of the diff I can move that side to side so that tells me that at a minimum I need to put a couple of shims on this side to push out that way or I might actually need to put the pinion further in so what we'll do then is we'll take it apart and we'll start having a look Okay then, so as we've taken it out, there is actually no shims here whatsoever. Normally you'd have a shim here to put it into the diff case, but there is absolutely no shims there whatsoever. Um, and that's probably why I've got a little bit of side to side movement. So that's one of the things you should check. And when we come to put it back in, I'll show you what to do and how to do it there. And also, in fairness, it feels okay. There's a little tiny bit of play there. But it does feel okay inside. But still, what I'm going to do is quickly clean this up and then we'll start taking it apart and having a look what I find inside. Okay, so got to open up and I'll actually tell you that there is very, very little oil in there. It's not even sat above the cross pins. In fact, there's so little, there's, not, there's such a tiny amount, probably about two millimeters on the bottom. So that's why it's also really important to check these diffs because that one had absolutely no oil in it whatsoever. So take off. The gasket very very carefully okay there's the gasket off I will drop out the spider And then take out the sun gear on the top here to find out how many shims I have below. So 
sometimes with these, just get something two sides and then it'll take that off. Pop the pin out. Okay. So, in here I've obviously got my O-ring. Then, just get rid of the oil on them. One, two, three shims. So I have got the correct amount of shims. Okay, so I've checked everything over. Now, I do have three shims in here. However, um, after checking, because I thought I was uh, I had the wrong shims in here, I do have the wrong shims in here. So what you should have is one big shim and two of the smaller shims. But I have one of the smaller shims and two of the bigger shims. Now, the smaller shim is slightly thicker. So that means that rather than having 0.8 that I should have, I've actually got 0.6 in there. Okay, so this was important that I checked this over because this would have been one of the discs that are blown because it didn't have the right amount of shims in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start rebuilding it and uh, I'm going to try and shim it to where I think it should be um, in regards to its feel. So what I'm going to do is just pop the bottom one out quickly. So to do that, pop the grab screw out the side here. Spin that in line. Very, very fiddly, but once you do get it, that pin pops out of the side there. There you go. You can then grab hold of it and put it out of the side. Off, off, look up in the bearing. Let's have a look how many shins I've got at the bottom there as well. So, O-ring, one, two, three, but the same again, two big ones, one small one. Okay, so I've spent a bit of time looking and playing with these diffs, um, and I actually found a solution. And the main problem is, isn't the actual shims behind the pin, because when you have the limited slip diffs, it works around the outside of here, and it pushes the pinion down from the outside. So putting shims behind the pin is only going to push on that inside bit and also is going to be um, limited to how much you can put behind the pin, which isn't going to make it very strong. So what I've actually come up with is a solution to shim around the outside. So I've already done the bottom of there and I filled it up with oil um, so I could show you it all back together. So what I did, obviously put your bearing through there, put that through, put your O-ring on, a little tip for getting to the o-ring down at the bottom there inside the diff case is if you get a socket that's about the same size you can push that down even if it's all the way inside there then a big shim little shim and now these aren't massively important get them in there to hold that pin into place without too much movement so that's the main goal for this part it's just to hold that pin in there without too much movement. The, the less movement you've got, the better. So if you've got, can get the 0.8 shims, I'd do that, that would be absolutely perfect. Now, what I've actually found is I've got hold of these shims here, which I already had anyway. Uh, they're 13 by 16, and they are the shims that are used to hold the bearing on there into the diff housing. So I had these lying about, and just randomly, they fit absolutely perfectly. So. They go nicely over there. They sit around the pin edge. They're not bigger than the pin, the gear, so they're absolutely perfect. Now, here's the hit of it though. To get this tight, I had to use eight of these shims stacked up on there. Now, don't worry, they do sit higher than the little gap for the pin, but the pin does hold them in place once it's in. A little bit fiddly to get in. Now, that is eight shims on there. 
and that is both sides. So that's 1.6 mil each side because they're 0.2 each. So 13 by 16, 0.2, and I've actually used eight each side. Now, a lot of people ask me, how do I tell how many shims to use on each side whenever I'm shimming anything? So shimming a diff isn't exact science because all the gears inside all got very slightly different tolerances. So what I do is when it's all apart and dry, no oil in it at all, I put some in, give it a try. And I put in five to start with, it's still loose. Went to six on each side, still loose. Went to seven on each side, still loose. Went to eight on each side, felt really nice. But what I did do then is I went to nine just on one side because it did feel nice to start with at eight on each side. When I put nine in, the diff started to lock up, so it was a little bit too much. So it is trial and error. It's going to be different for every diff. Some diffs might be happy with seven on each side. Some diffs might want nine on each side, but mine likes eight each side. And if needs be, you could have seven on one and eight on the other, for example. Not ideal, but if needs be, it's there. So put them together without any oil in. Give them a spin. If it's still loose, you put more in. Once it's tightened up and it's got tight, go back one. That's how to do it. There's not an exact science. There's not an amount you need. So I did that and I got to eight each side. When I put nine in one side, it got too tight. So as I said, this is a little bit fiddly to get on. So literally... The way I found easiest to do it is to, it's not easy on camera though, hold it on your finger, push in and let it clip in. And then that's clipped in there. Now, one of the things you might notice straight away is that when you push that down, that now sits flat. Because when you push that gear down before, the actual shaft from the cup was coming through about half, well, about a millimetre. So now that sits flat. So there is 1.6 mil of shims behind there. You've got the shims that hold onto the pin, but they're not actually really being used because they're going around the outside of there now. So I put my oil in here. Uh, actually, it needs a tiny bit more. I've let it sit for a little while. I'm using 30,000 in the rear of mine because that's what I use in my Quahavi, which is the long wheelbase Creighton. So I've got my oil in there. I've got a nice clean gasket surface there. And I'm going to get them together. Get it done up and then just check that it's not too tight. Okay, so now it's all nice and tight. I've got movement there. It's not loose, it's not tight, um, and it's just nice. And there's no or very, very little play there. So what I'm gonna do now is check the shimming into the actual housing. So to do that, first of all, I need to clean off all the grease down the bottom there. Okay, so I've cleaned it all off. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually check the mesh of that pinion into the diff cup. So I'm going to hold that in nice and tight, grab a set of feeler gauges and just check how much gaps between that diff housing and that pinion. So make sure at this point you do hold that diff tight in there. So 0 0.6 won't fit in, but 0.5 will. So there's 0.5 of a mil gap between the pinion and the diff case. So if I do need to move that pinion in, I can. So what I need to do now is get a nice bit of light. Now this might be quite hard on camera. Okay, so there is a little bit of space. I'm trying to get it so you can see it. Where the crown wheel gears on the side here, the big one, they don't go all the way to the end of that pinion. So that means that there's that half a millimetre there of space that we can use to get some extra grip on those teeth. So what I'm going to do is pop the pinion off and get a couple of spaces behind there, a couple of shims. So I've got the pinion out. Um, now just a quick one. Whenever I take one of, the, one of these grub screws out, what I always do is wind it all the way in to the point where it actually goes past where it normally would. Now what this does, and if you can't get it to do it, it's because you're locked tight 
is jamming up the threads and you'll never get that back tight. So take it all the way past and you can see inside there that's actually going inside and then all the way back out. Now, if you can't get it through, heat it up, melt the lot tight, wind it through and wind it back out again. Because what I've quite what I've done myself is I've put this in, thought it was tight, and actually all it was, it was tight against a lot tight, not against a pinion, and then you get it slipping. So whenever you take one of these out, always make sure you wind it back through, all the way through and past. So now I've got it out, I'm going to pop this bearing out from the inside. So that bearing's out. Now I have some shims here that fit on these bearings perfectly. Now these shims are 0.2 thick. So what I'm actually going to do is put two of them together to be 0.4. Now I know I've got 0.5 of a gap. So by putting that 0.4 there, I've still got 0.1 of a gap. So it is going to be tight and I don't mind it being a bit tight. And then honestly, even if it does touch slightly, it's not the end of the world. So they're going to go in there behind the bearing. Okay, so now that's gone in there, that bearing's going to sit 0.4 of a millimetre further on that way, which is going to make that pinion sit 0.4 of a millimetre further on to make sure that it actually hits that crown wheel all the way in. So at the moment, it's slightly out like that. That's an exaggeration. But what I'm doing is pushing it all the way in so it gets the best possible grip. Okay, so now that's in there, get my diff back in there, okay, still spin round without hitting the diff, absolutely fine, but I've actually cleared off the majority of that play there now already, there's barely any there. So what I will do is just see if I can get one shin behind here. You never normally need more than one shim when you do the shim in the pinion. Sometimes you do need more, so just be aware that you do need to have a little fiddle about like you normally would with any diff. Actually, that's gone in quite nicely, quite nice and tight, and there's very little play there, and I've got rid of all side-to-side -side movement just purely because it can't go past that pin. So there's no side-to-side -side movement there. Little tiny rattle, but nothing major. Um, so that's nice and tight. So this is going to go back together. So we're all back together, nice diff action. Yeah, all feels lovely, nothing's too tight, nothing's too loose. Um, we'll grease this up, get it back in the car, and then we'll get it out and tested. Um, I'll put at least sort of 10 packs, both 6 and 8S, through this before I release it so I know it's strong. Um, so you guys know that it's strong for when you do it in your cars. Okay. Three.